Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim at Stanley Kim Clinic for Blood Disease and Cancer in Claremont, California. Today, we will discuss breast implant associated lymphoma. The breast implant lymphoma was first published in 1997, and it was in 2011 when the FDA first reported a possible link between breast implants and the development of lymphoma. Now, it has received lots of media attention, and the uh, class action suits have been filed against the uh, manufacturer. Thank you for watching. The full name of breast implant lymphoma is Breast Implant Associated Anaplastic Large Cell Lymphoma. Most lymphomas originate from either B cell or T cells, and the breast implant lymphoma arises from T cells, so it's a part of a T cell lymphoma. Anaplastic large cell lymphoma has four subtypes, primary systemic ALK positive type, ALK negative type, primary cutaneous uh, anaplastic large cell lymphoma, and the breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma. It causes, of course, breast implant, especially uh, with the uh, textured uh, surface one. As of July 2020, over 600 cases and at least 17 deaths were reported, but the exact number of cases is not known because of limitation in worldwide reporting and the lack of global breast implant sale data. It occurs about 7 to 10 years after implant, more than 90% of patients had a textured surface breast implant, and the 91% of all reported patients had an elegant biocell textures breast implant brands, which has more than six times higher occurrence rate compared with the other brands. So in July 2019, a worldwide voluntary recall was made by Allegan. However, because the uh, occurrence rate with uh, even Allegan BioCell is still very low at one out of 2,000, which is 0.045%, and the risk is even lower with the other brands, uh, prophylactic Removal of implants in asymptomatic patients is not recommended. Uh, there is no data between types of implant refill, saline or silicone, but the content is not really matter. It's more to do with the uh, surface of the implant. And the, please look at this uh, picture uh, offered by uh, FDA. The uh, implant is right on the in the middle here, and then. Uh, the lymphoma uh, cells grow around the uh, implant in the uh, effusion, in the fluid. So it's, it's a lymphoma is mostly grows in the liquid uh, fluid uh, surrounding the, uh, uh, the, the, the implants. And then the body try to uh, protect uh, or keep them from uh, spreading by making a, a fibrous capsules outside that uh, and this is a red line here. For diagnosis, a good history and physical is important. Uh, asking the history of breast implants and uh, examining the uh, breast, checking the lymph nodes in the neck and axillary area, and then checking the liver, spleen, etc. About 60% of patients present with the malignant effusion uh, seroma around the uh, implant causing swelling and the pain and about 20% with a mass, so you can feel the lump, and 20% with a mass and effusion. It can spread to the regional lymph nodes, like uh, axillary lymph nodes, in about 20%, but not all enlarged axillary lymph nodes are cancerous because uh, it can cause the inflammatory changes, making the uh, lymph nodes swollen. Ultrasound of the breast and ultrasound-guided fine needle aspiration is used to obtain the sample the liquid uh, around the uh, uh, implant and to send them for cytology, cell block, and the flow cytometry to check ALK and the CD30. ALK stands for anaplastic lymphoma kinase because breast implant associated lymphoma has an ALK negative and the C CD30 positive. So if the specimen show the ALK positive, then you know it's not a breast implant associated lymphoma. If the ultrasound is not conclusive, then you order the MRI or PET CT scan. But the mammogram is less sensitive than ultrasound for detecting an effusion or a mass. After diagnosis, PET CT is done for staging. Please look at the pictures I draw. 
Most patients present with the uh, stage 1E lymphoma, uh, where the lymphoma is confined in the breast. And about 10% have stage 2B, where the lymphoma has spread to the regional lymph nodes, like uh, axillary lymph nodes. And in about 5%, uh, patients have a stage 4, which is the, uh, uh, where the uh, cancer has spread to the distant organ, like a bone marrow or liver. Where is the stage 3? Most patients have stage either 1, 2, or 4. So that's why I didn't uh, uh, show you that stage 3. For treatment, complete surgical resection of the implant, the fibrous capsule, and any mass is the most important, which leads to cure for in most patients. And there is no need for adjuvant chemotherapy or radiation therapy uh, if completely resected. If it's not completely resected or for more advanced stages, then chemotherapy is used uh, using EPOC or CHOP. Or anti-CD30 antibody drug conjugate, uh, brand Tuxmep, Virotin, the uh, brand name is Etcetris, is used. Edgeman radiation therapy used for locally advanced or not resectable disease. Please look at this uh, photo and the picture. Uh, this uh, let me change this one to the red. Uh, this is the uh, uh, re removed implant. And then this is the fibrous capsule surrounding the, uh, uh, the implant. And in between, uh, there are lymphoma cells in the liquid, the effusion here. The breast implant lymphoma is an indolent lymphoma and has a pretty good prognosis and the mortality rate is just about 3%. Uh, when the patients uh, can have complete surgery, uh, most of people live well over 10 years. And with the radiation therapy, uh, still like a almost 70-80% live over 10 years. And even with the chemotherapy, uh, about 70% lives many, many years. But if the cancer spread and the patients can't have a surgery, then the survival drops. After completion of treatment, regular checkup with the HMP and ultrasound every six months for two years is recommended. In general, patients with a silicon implant are advised to have an MRI scan three years after implant to check the leakage, and then every two years thereafter. Thank you for watching.